Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age 2! In the last episode, Amelia very unwillingly decided to go along with Anders' plan. We are making a mage an apostate in a chantry. This is going to require so much penance. This is... This is not looking very good for Amelia's immortal soul. Also, Carver, Carver, get out of the way. I really like the Chantry design for, um, you know, the, the Kirkwall Chantry, obviously. I just, I think this is so cool, so atmospheric. I really like it. Um, now then, I do know where Carl is. However, I very quickly want to see if there's anything else in here. Um, what is that? We've got a random book in front of a barred off entryway. Okay, that's a bit weird. But whatever, I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation. Oh, we got a crate. Vial of holy water. This is... This is the maker sending Amelia a sign. You're gonna need this. In two minutes, love, you are gonna need that holy water. Now then, hello, Carl. And there's nothing over here. All right. Anders, I know you too well. I knew you would never give up. What's wrong? Why are you talking like- I was too rebellious, like you. The Templars knew I had to be made an example of. No. How else will mages ever master themselves? You'll understand, Anders. As soon as the Templars teach you to control yourself. This is the apostate. No! You will never take another mage as you took him! And with that, Amelia is just... I think she's trying to prevent herself from having a panic attack right now. She saw the Templar. She was like, oh God, I am. I am going to have to fight these people. They're just doing their jobs. Oh God. And then this. And Amelia is just like, what the fuck? What the hell is happening? She's um, very not happy right now. She is deeply distressed by this entire situation. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Lieutenant. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. How dare you. Everyone's doing all right for hell. Okay, uh, you know what? Summon the puppy. I... Anders, what did you do? It's like... You brought a piece of the fate into this world. I had already forgotten what that feels like. Okay, so this is... This is another one of those times where I'm like, the angry option is just not what Amelia would be feeling. I'd go for the aggressive option if it was something along the lines of, what the fuck was that? Who the hell are you? But it isn't. It's a, he tricked you, Anders. He baited the bastard Templars into coming here, how dare he? And Amelia currently isn't feeling anything like that. So it, going for this, the emotion is correct, the line is not, which is rather unfortunate. Um, because Amelia can't be uh, aggressive in this scenario, um, I'm going to assume that, like like I said, she is trying her hardest not to have a panic attack right now. She is, as soon as she leaves the Chantry and gets a breath of fresh air, she is just, I think she might be sick, to be perfectly honest. She is not feeling good right now. And she is trying to cover that up with humor. What did you do? Not the fade part. The angry, glowing bit. It's like a gateway to the Fade inside you, glowing like a beacon. I have some unique circumstances, yes. But Carl, what happened? How did they get you? 
The Templars here are far more vigilant than in Ferelden. They found a letter I was writing you. You cannot imagine it, Anders. All the color, all the music in the world, gone. I would gladly give up my magic. But this... I'll never be whole again. Please, kill me before I forget again. I don't know how you brought it back, but it's fading. Carl, no! Maybe we can find a cure. Can you cure a beheading? The dreams of tranquil mages are severed. There is nothing left of them to fix. I would rather die a mage than live as a Templar puppet. Hmm, do as he asks, don't kill him. Ooh. Uh, firstly, I'd like it noted that I liked how the sarcastic option turned out there. The, you know, like, how did you do that? The angry gl glowing thing? How, how was that? It's because that is what Amelia would be focusing on. Who cares about the tranquil showing emotions? That was demonic. And Amelia is not about that life. Um, now on to, on to Carl. Um, ooh, this is tricky. I've, I've said this before, Amelia is a little bit creeped out by the Tranquil. She doesn't hate them. She doesn't view them as being less than human. She likes them. I mean, it's impossible for them to be possessed. At least that is what Amelia has been led to believe. I'm just going to put that there. In As far as Amelia is aware, Tranquil Mages cannot become possessed or become abominations whatever and so she really likes them but she is a deeply emotional person and the fact that they are so emotionless freaks her out a little bit she doesn't think they should all be killed god no that that is awful you can't just go around killing the tranquil and claiming it is a mercy killing at the same time this man is asking to be killed and it would be rather cruel to make him be tranquil again, if you get what I mean. He was forced to become tranquil, he got his emotions back, and then he's becoming tranquil again. I think that Amelia doesn't approve of mages being forced to become tranquil if they haven't committed a crime. You know, if they've committed a really bad crime, make them tranquil. Fuck it. They they gave up their rights as soon as they did something illegal. illegal. Make them tranquil. If they ask to be made tranquil, no problems there. But a mage who's like, no, I would rather die, just cut off my head. Now nah, we're going to make you tra tranquil. At that point, Amelia's like, hmm, that... That's kind of a shitty thing to do. Maybe don't do that. So I I think she'd uh, she'd be encouraging Anders just to be merciful. I would rather die than be tranquil. Help him. I got here too late. I'm sorry, Carl. I'm so sorry. Now it's fading. Why do you look at me like that? Goodbye. <laughs> we should leave before more Templars come. Quick question, what are we going to do about the bodies? Because that seems highly suspicious. We're just leaving them there? So, let me guess. This is the part where you tell me you're an abomination? You're wrong. But not far wrong. I... This is hard to explain. When I was in Amaranthine, I met a spirit of justice who was trapped outside the Fade. We became friends, and he recognized the injustice that mages in Thedas face every day. And that's different than a demon. Just as demons prey on the deadly sins of mankind, there are good spirits who embody our virtues. Spirits of compassion, fortitude, justice. They are the Maker's first children, and they have all but given up on us. Hmm. Uh, you are fortunate. No. No, he really isn't. Um. 
As I said before, Amelia does try to keep the Maker's Commandments in her heart. And he is trying to explain what's happened. He's trying to explain, hey, this is why I did the thing. This is what happened to me. And I think, I think she does want to hear him out. If only because if she knows the details, it might be a bit less scary to her. So I think, I think she wants answers and just being aggressive for the sake of being aggressive. I don't, I don't think that fits here. What does this have to do with your eyes glowing? To live outside the Fade, he needed a host. I offered to help him. We were going to work together, bring justice to every child ever ripped away from his mother to be sent to the Circle. But I guess I had too much anger. Once he was inside me, he changed. So you have this spirit of justice living in your head? It's not like that. He's gone now. He's part of me. It's not like we can have a conversation. I feel his thoughts as my own. Not even the greatest scholar could tell you where I end and he begins. Oh, <laughs> Amelia, her head is reeling. Her world is spinning. She is completely like, what the hell? I feel sick again. <laughs> Ooh, um, not, no, not this, not this. What Amelia is hearing right now is, so uh, Amelia does acknowledge that spirits exist. She doesn't trust them. In Amelia's opinion, spirits, demons, they're, they're the exact same thing. Neither can be trusted. So when, when hearing Anders' story, I think she'd feel badly for him. From Amelia's perspective, this young man was living outside of the circle, so he probably wasn't, he probably hadn't been taught all of the safety measures on how to avoid demons and all that kind of stuff. Me, the player, I know that Anders ran away from a circle. Amelia, Amelia is unaware of that, so please don't. Anders was from a circle, I know, she doesn't. Um, as I was saying, so yeah, he, he probably hadn't been taught all of the safety measures for how to deal with demons and spirits safely, and that way is just say no, avoid them like the plague. And this, probably a demon, pretending to be a spirit of justice, effectively groomed Anders so that Anders would be his host. And now this guy's an abomination. From Amelia's perspective, that is what has gone on. And I think she just feel badly for him, you poor soul. You were tricked into becoming an abomination because you didn't have the circle's teachings. That is just, that's just so sad. This is obviously difficult for you. For him, we'll be hunted for sure now. I thought I was helping my friend. He would have died, I guess, if that even means anything. And he wanted to help me. He knew what mages have suffered, but my anger, when I see Templars now, things that have always outraged me, but I could never do anything about, he comes out. And he is no longer my friend, Justice. He is a force of vengeance, and he has no grasp of mercy. I like men with dark past. No. No. Um, currently, Amelia is feeling pity for this man. We, d we don't want to be flirting with abominations. No, thank you. Can this be undone? Can justice ever be separated from you? I don't think so. The only way a spirit has ever been separated from a living host is by its death. The curses of my own making. All I can do now is hope to control it. And can you control it? Can you bring him out at will? No. He comes only when I've lost all power over myself. 
It's a madness, a frenzy. I only find out after what I might have done. Hmm. Yeah, I think... I think that Amelia... The vibe that she is getting from Anders is that this was a good man who got tricked. And as he said, he thought he was doing a good thing. He was trying to be good and a demon took advantage of that. And I mean, he's, he's still doing good works to this day. That was her first thought about him. He's a healer who's helping out the refugees for absolutely no coin in return. She then learned that it was magical healing and she was a bit put off by that. But the, the initial thought still does stand. This man is helping these people with no reward. And I, I think she's kind of like, I think he's a good person, but he was just tricked. And I think she feels an immense amount of empathy for him right now. She's still shit scared. Please do not get me wrong. I'm not saying that she's not scared of him anymore. She is. She is petrified, but she feels badly about it. Is there anything I can do for you? You're the first one I've ever told this. Thank you for not running away. My maps are yours, as am I if you wish me to join your expedition. I thought I was done with the Grey Wardens, but if you have any need of me, I will be waiting here. Hmm, and uh, you know what? Let's do that, and I believe... It's not a pretty home, but at least it's clean. No, I... I know you have something to say, Anders. I know when you have cut scenes. There we go. I had a friend like you once. Got in all kinds of trouble. Dragged me along. Didn't think I'd be doing that again. I got a bit weighty the last time we talked. Sorry for putting that on you. Oh, buddy, it, it happens an awful lot. You'd be surprised how people just tell me their darkest secrets. I must look trustworthy. You look... something. True. Proud. Like, even if you don't agree with me, you'll be honest. I just... I hope I didn't seem too selfish when I told you about justice. I didn't know what would happen. I figured a willing host, a friend. It had to be better than playing the demon and haunting some corpse. At least he's got a nice body. No. Again, no. Amelia does not want to flirt with the abomination. Um, hmm. I will say, I do wish that the dialogue options would say what the actual line is, rather than giving a rough estimate of what the line is, because out of all of these... I like this one. You did the right thing. Because that in and of itself, you did the right thing. Amelia absolutely does not think he did the right thing. However, the actual line is, we can't always predict the outcomes of our actions. We can only make them with a true heart. And I like that. You know, he thought he was doing a good thing. He didn't mean to become an abomination. He didn't make a pact with a demon and become a blood mage, which would be an absolutely horrible, horrible thing to do that only evil people do and will not cause inter-party conflict at a later date, no sir. He thought he was doing a good thing. And as I said, Amelia has a great deal of sympathy for Anders right now. That doesn't make it better. The line is just it's still creepy, which is such an understatement. It is too much of an understatement. I can't go with that. And you should have known better. Here's the thing. He's a mage living outside the circle. Therefore, he's not had access to the best education. So Amelia can't really... If he was like a mage who had spent his entire life in the circle... Then Amelia would be saying, you should know better. You had the benefit of growing up and living in the circle. But Anders, he ran away from that. And as I said, I don't, 
I don't believe that Amelia knows that he was a circle mage. She can probably guess that he might have been at one stage, but she doesn't know how long he spent in the circle. For all she knows, he could have just spent a week there. That's not enough time to get that education. And also, with her current mindset, this is just victim blaming, and I don't think Amelia would do that. So I'm I'm gonna go for the top one. As I said, the the estimated text does not match up with what is actually said. I believe there is actually a mod that fixes that, that will, you know, give you exactly what Hawk will say. I probably should have downloaded that, but I'm I'm semi-familiar with Dragon Age 2, so I, I generally speaking, I do know what they're gonna say. We can't always predict the outcome of our actions. We can only make them with a true heart. Kind, wise, and beautiful. You must have made a deal with some demons yourself. I'm sorry, I shouldn't presume. I just... We've hardly met and I feel like I know you. Am I making you uncomfortable? Amelia wouldn't consider flirting with an abomination. But then the abomination flirted with her and she was like, wait, what? Pardon? Oh no, let... The train wreck is beginning. The train wreck is beginning. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this gets me. This gets me every time. Okay, I just want to... I would like to have a little bit of a conversation right now. A one-way conversation with Abby. Abby M in the comments. Hi there. On part 35, I believe it was, of my Dragon Age Awakening Let's Play, you asked, so I'm guessing you're going to be romancing Anders in Dragon Age 2. And then you went on to ask me about when I was going to start posting Dragon Age 2, if I was going to take a break between Dragon Age Origins and this. And you might have noticed that I completely ignored the first part of your comment. It's because you were right, Abby. <laughs> I've... Let me explain. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go for it's unexpected here out of all of these. Effectively, Amelia has always been the... the less pretty sister between her and Bethany. I think Amelia is beautiful, but when, when compared with Bethany, she was always less pretty. And any time someone would get close to her and Amelia would start to think, oh, this is going to be my, my first boyfriend or my first girlfriend, they would then follow that up with, hey, can you give me an in with your little sister? She was always the stepping stone. And as such, I think she has quite low self-esteem. Also, the fact that she hates herself probably doesn't help with that sort of thing. She's very insecure. And Anders flirting with her right now, calling her beautiful. Uh, this is an awful way to put it. Bethany is dead. He can't be flirting with her to get to her little sister because her little sister is no more. So from Amelia's perspective, it's kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe he does genuinely think I'm beautiful. Oh, that is, that is so lovely of him. That is so kind. I am, um, I, I can't believe he thinks that. So, oh, as I said, let, let the train wreck begin. This is awful. <laughs> doesn't mean I want you to stop. I'll keep that in mind. I warn you, though. I'm not a safe man to get involved with. I'll hurt you. Not that. I think that's a bit too forward for Amelia. As I said, I think she's... She's quite wide-eyed about romance. She's very naive. And I think that... As I said, her head is turned by a very simple compliment. So I, I don't see her doing that. I think I'm inclined to go with this. I think, out of the two, I think this makes the most sense. Why would you hurt me? 
You saw what I did in the Chantry. That's who I am. A year ago, maybe we could have had something. But I'm not that man anymore. I'll break your heart. And that might kill me as surely as the Templars. Oh, no. This makes me sad. Um, but yeah, effectively, Amelia... I kind of like this, the idea that Amelia... Amelia kind of has this charisma about her professionally and with friends. People seem to gravitate towards her. But from a romantic perspective, she was always overlooked. And so Anders taking the first step and making those moves on her and Amelia very innocently kind of going along with it, being so flattered that he would take an interest in her like no one else ever has. And it just completely turns her head. Because I I do think she is a bit of a romantic. I'm sorry I keep stopping, but I want to talk about this. As I said, she grew up looking at Malcolm and Leandra and their romance. And she has a very ideal excuse me, idealised version of that in her head, that's what she wants. I think she is a hopeless romantic. She doesn't have much sense when it comes to romance. And it, oh, it, it breaks my heart. I love it and I hate it because after, after the sweetness that was Artin and Alistair, I just wanted something incredibly toxic to just bring me back down. I'm sorry about your sister. She sounds like a special girl. Why? Because she was a mage. Your other sister says she was a good person. She never turned down a chance to help people. Yes. Yes, I'm sure the Chantry's got a shrine with her portrait on it. I was trying to be nice. Stick to Surly. It works for you. Also, I think... I think that line Anders said at the... At the end of the Tranquility questline, the, um, you're the first person I've ever told about this. Thank you for not running away. It makes her feel special. She's the first person he's ever told about his problems, and she can help him. She can change him. And me as the player, I'm like, no, bitch. No, you can't. Run away. That's a stupid idea. But um, Amelia won't listen. <laughs> Amelia's gonna do what Amelia's gonna do, and it's gonna hurt. God damn. So I think for the next quest, I am gonna do bait and switch. However, first I want to quickly dash around Low Town, see if I can find any more of the sharps. Hello? Oh, no, wrong way. Where you at? Over here. Get them. And bring forth the popper. And, ooh, Carver's looking a bit low. Have that. There you go, buddy. And next. And with the back, come on. Get him. Ooh, next wave. Oh, look at our little brother. Ooh, sharp little pinpricks. Directions to the Sharp's base. We've got a new base and you lot best keep the law away. Directions to the low town sneak below, but don't come unless you've got good news or you'll get an answer square between the eyes. Ignacio Strand. Ooh. Okay. Uh, yoink. Thank you. And whilst I remember, not that I wanted this, we have a level. <laughs> good and then you can have some of this i kind of like to make and as a healing damaging combo i think that makes sense for him now that i know that the base is just down there however as i said let's let's do a sweep of low town 
see if there are any other random groups just dicking about. Oh, hello. Hello! Let's and next! It. Yes, get in there, puppy! Hello? Hello! Goodbye! Get in there! And next! Ooh, third wave! Who are you going after? Come on, there we go! And ooh, once again, Carve is going down. Have some healing. And you. Uh, there's one left. There we go. Okay, there we are. Good stuff. Uh, whoops. And yoink. Okay, any random chests or crates? No, not looking like it. Anyone down in the alienage? No, everything. Everything is safe down here. That's good. Oh, my alarm's about to go off. Like I said, I'm going to finish my sweep of Low Town. And we'll probably stop in front of Anso. That would make sense. Be with you in a minute, and so anyone? Hello? Not looking like it. Oh, what was that? A sack. Yes. Thank you. Okie doke. Good stuff. And there we go. This is a nice place to stop. Hold up, I forgot codex entries again. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Blood Dragon Armor. Commissioned by an infamous Navaran dragon hunter, this armor was crafted in a time when dragons had almost been hunted to extinction. Infused with the beast blood, the armor gained notoriety after the hunter died at the hands of men rather than the dragons it was designed to protect him from. The Far Cliffs of Kirkwall. Written by a Ferelden refugee as she fled the blight, this book of poems describes her dreams of a new start in Kirkwall, the city across the sea. Readers will surely be enriched by her insights. In the next episode, we will be talking with Anso and getting started on Bait and Switch, but until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.